K0LWC here, not in the shack today. We are on a road trip. Yes, we are in Washington, D.C., and I had to stop by the uh, National Capital Radio and Television Museum. Now, I've been told there is tons of cool stuff in there, uh, radio history, television history, even a ham radio station. Let's get in there and check it out. Now, the first thing you're going to see when you walk in the door is the K3RTV Museum Amateur Radio Station. Now, they have some more modern gear here. Like here we see the uh, Kenwood TS570 here. And they also have some old Johnson stuff. Uh, they have a Hammerland HQ18A. Um, this is some super cool stuff. If you have a license, um, you can totally get on the air, operate this station. You can see they even have some cool QSL cards here. Uh, I said this is an awesome thing they have at the museum. Also exposes people that come in the museum to ham radio, which I think is an awesome, awesome thing. So if you're coming here, make sure you ask about jumping on the air. Uh, it's a must. Right, you're going to walk in one of the first places they're going to take you in here, which has to be a demonstration of this spark gap. Like, can you see that in there? Look at that. I didn't know this. Look at this. A radio burger, a McDonald's fry radio, and a Big Mac transistor radio. I never had an idea. Another cool area you have to check out here is they actually have working stations. You can see these headphones down here. Uh, these are actual crystal radios you can try out uh, that are made right here for you and they're connected to a wire outside. So if you want to give your try at listening to an actual crystal radio like many did back in the day, um, they have them right here with a wire outside that you can test. And other crystal radios right over here that you can check out, like check out this old uh, Howell radio receiver. Again, you put the little wire here uh, onto the crystal, move it around, and maybe you could pick up a station or two. But they have all different types that you can check out uh, in the crystal radio corner that are super, super cool. Like, look at this. Quaker Oats, crystal radio. Now that's super cool. We're coming into room 202 here, and this is actually one of the most interesting things I thought in this room were, check these things out. Look at these decorative items. When I first saw them, I was like, what is this, wall art? These are actually speakers, but people wanted to have something that was decorative on the wall, not something that looked like a speaker. So these are actually all different speakers that you would use on your radio uh, back in the 1920s and the 1930s. Uh, boy, that doesn't look like a speaker that I have in my shack. So this is picking up AM radio. We have an antenna outside, 100-foot antenna, not quite 30 feet off the ground. Uh, and it, you can see the speaker here is a little different than the horn speaker. So there's an early... This is David. He was our docent for my visit to the museum. He was fantastic. He will walk you through the entire museum, tell you about the history of television and radio. He was phenomenal and is also a fellow ham radio operator. Had a great conversation with him. Shout out, David. All right, now we got to go to room 203. 203 has something that I have never heard of before. Check this out. This is a, uh, a Rito. Here is a little piece of paper. Crosley Rito paper. So my understanding is that basically it's like a fax machine, but it came over the radio. Now what this machine would spit out would look like something like this. Uh, basically it's the summary of a news article, but they would broadcast it over RF and it would basically come out of this little machine. Think of it like a really early day fax machine and it would print to a paper like this. Now they were plagued with interference uh, that would really mess up the articles. They really never caught on, but basically these were like newspapers delivered via RF. I never knew about this machine. Now another thing I found fascinating was this Philco model 41608. I never knew this was a thing. This blew my mind. So this is a big old, you know, old style radio. Uh, should look very familiar for some of you. Uh, this has short wave in addition to the broadcast band. But look at this. So you open it up, right? Inside of here, you had uh, the ability on to play a record. Uh, so you had your phonograph. But here's what's super interesting is you could put a blank record on here and there was actually a record function. You could record things off of the radio or get this. This is actually a microphone. Uh, in the tour, they talked about how they used to send messages to uh, soldiers overseas in the 40s, and they would actually record messages to them on this machine and then send it over so they could play it back on the record. How crazy is that? Like, I did not know this was a thing. A microphone, the ability to record off a shortwave or a broadcast band onto a record blew my mind. And coming around here now, here's another thing that was pretty crazy. Um, this is circa 1935. 
Philco Transitone model CT2 CT5 automobile radio. Yes, in the early days, uh, automobiles didn't come with radios by default like they do now. You had to go to a radio shop and have them install one of these radio boxes. And of course, they would give you a little tuner and volume knob up here that you would use on your dash. So in the early days, uh, there was no radio just built in uh, to that brand new car you bought. You had to go to a radio shop and have them install a radio. Did not know that either. So here they have what's called from spark to bite. Now, if you've never had the opportunity to play with one of these old keys, there's something very satisfying about this. But of course, in graduating up to what we know more of now, and then uh, I have a crystal radio. They're kind of showing you the evolution from vacuum to crystal. Um, we get in here to the Philco uh, from the 1930s. And then of course the 50s come and transistor radios. Uh, then they get into these old, old TVs with magnifying glasses on them. Like, are you kidding me? That's crazy. And I would never thought I'd see the day, although I did predict it. Here's an iPhone 3 under a case in a museum. <laughs> Boy, talk about making me feel old. So kind of where we're at today, but a great little evolutionary time warp, you know, from the spark days to where we're at now. And oh, check this out. They have a Jacob's Ladder demonstration you can do here. This very ominous device makes you kind of worried about clicking it, but uh, it's totally safe and really cool. So make sure you check that out and oh, this is actually from WRC Radio in Washington, D.C. Check this out. This is actually what they used on the radio for the chimes. As someone that worked in radio before, that's super cool. All right, that is the museum, folks. I am giving you just a little taste of what is actually in there. If you are in the Washington, D.C. area, again, this is just east of the Washington, D.C. metro. Make sure you come check this place out. Well worth the trip. If you are a ham radio operator, you love electronics, circuitry, radio, television, whatever it is, you will absolutely love this place. You'll be in here for hours. I would give it at least two to three hours, maybe even four. So again, highly recommend this place. Check it out. Great people, had a great conversation, talking all about ham radio. Uh, so again, uh, free admission, they take donations, can't encourage that enough. We need more places like this, great history. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you again next time.